18th, Mike Tyson, Ray the Ruddick. Ray the Ruddick died. If he doesn't die, it doesn't count. If he's not dead, it doesn't count. All right, good afternoon, uh, gentlemen. There's no legacy here, are there? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, thanks for joining us today here, to, here at Fredericks. Uh, we're here to announce another fight that will take place on the uh, show on the 28th of February at the O2 Arena in London. And it will feature Chris Eubanks Jr., who will be challenging for the WBA interim middleweight title against Dmitry Chudinov, who comes from Moscow and is the uh, champion. Um, it's a great opportunity for, for young Chris. I think he proved last in his last fight against Billy Joe Saunders that he deserves to be up there with the top guys in the world. And this, uh, well actually, if he wins this fight, and it's a tough fight for him, if he wins this fight, will actually um, launch him certainly into even bigger fights and certainly put him, as far as everybody's concerned, well and truly in the top mix of the middleweights, middleweights in the world. So um, it's a bit of a coup for us to get it, get the fight over here. It's on the uh, undercard, obviously, of the Tyson Fury Christian Hammer fight. Um, should be a great night for the fans, um, and I'm quite sure that everybody uh, you know, enjoys the competitive fights that we're trying to put together at the moment. And one thing's for sure, which you can't take away from young Chris and his, his dad, Chris Senior, that they don't bulk at the, at the opportunity of stepping up. You know, it is a big step up for him, but um, looking at him in his last fight, I think he's more than capable of, uh, of winning this fight. Chris is here, and uh, young Christopher is here, so, or both Chris's are here, so if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them. Chris, the other guy, how many times have you watched the video goes from and are you keeping it yourself when you watch it and you didn't start two or three rounds soon? You know, the, the, um, the fight was a, a big learning experience for me. Um, uh, you know, in my honest opinion, I felt I did enough in the later rounds to, uh, to take the fight. But um, obviously the loss is now on my record and um, you know, I'm now a man on a mission to redeem, to redeem that loss. Um, you know, I've taken a lot away from it. And, you know, one of the things that I now know is that you should, um, you know, I should have pressed earlier. I should have, you know, started the fight how I ended it. Which was, um, you know, I'm not going to say it was a mistake because, you know, in, on the night I felt like it was it was neck and neck. I didn't feel like I was losing. And then, obviously, I felt I dominated the championship rounds. Um, but you know, it's all a learning experience, and I'm, I'm uh, you know, I've learned a lot. And now I'm going to be building from that last performance to bring it into the, uh, the final 28. I thought both fighters come out of that fight with a lot of credit. It was a super fight. I think it's one of the fights of the year. And uh, you know, there's no uh, disgrace in the loss. I know that you know, fighters feel they want the perfect record, but. From my, you know, my observation is that I thought that um, Christopher, Christopher showed that he's, he's, he's up there with the guys. And uh, as I say, this fight give an opportunity to prove that. Chris, how much was the factor that you were given past the eight rounds with Billy Joe, who had done in 12 rounds on numerous occasions, leading into the championship rounds, as you said? It was my first uh, big test, you know, it was the first time I'd been in a 12 round fight, first time I'd gone past eight rounds and um, maybe that factored into why I chose to, um, you know, not up my gears earlier on in the fight because I've never been in 12 rounds, how am I going to feel once it gets to the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, um, now I know that, you know, I'm more than capable of, of performing through the entire fight and being able to finish very strong as I did in the fight. Um, and you know, I won't be ever making that mistake again. Um, you know, like I said, I've learned a lot from it. And um, this fight, this fight coming up now is gonna be, there's a few little tweaks that I'm gonna be adding into my training. Um, you know, sparring was a, a big factor in, um, it's a big factor in all fights and, um, I didn't get the right sparring partners for, for
for Billy. So um, you know, this fight, this camp, we're going to make sure we've got all the right opponents, uh, right, the right training partners. You know, if I have to go abroad or if I have to go to different parts of the country together, that's what we'll do. Um, but you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a man on a mission. Chris, did you think you were on that fight? He started late. He started late. The judges have a job to do, and in their view, he started late. So they gave the decision the way they saw it, which is that's boxing. But now he's learned from his mistakes, uh, and that one mistake, and uh, you know, everything that I feel and view and know from being a fighter. I do believe that um, everything that I've said prior to that fight is still on track. It's just simply put, follow strategy and instruction or learn the hard way. Either way, when you learn the hard way, you kind of learn. And you know, the abilities he has are there for everyone to see. It's not like you can't see it. How do you actually put it into working order? And that's what he now knows how to do. Uh, I've watched one. Um, I haven't got to properly look at him, but um, you know, this guy is built for me. Um, you know, my career has been, in my training career has been built on um, sparring and training with. Um, orthodox fighters, come forward fighters. I know how to deal with them very well. Um, so, and that's what I see in him. So, um, you know, there's not going to be any problems with me being able to deal with this guy. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Christina, we spoke in, uh, a month before the video saw this fight. You mentioned that you'd like Chris to do it. I think you said the proper way in terms of British, European, Commonwealth level. With this fight now, do you think you've now gone past that level? Or is that something you still want him to do? I would like that, but the market is a market and it has a pace. Opportunities, and you've got to take the opportunity when it comes. I didn't move the ventriloquist. I, I wasn't, my lips, I wasn't, my lips were moving. <laughs> ventriloquist keeps his mouth shut, my lips were moving. Um, look, uh, so your question again was? You mentioned that you like him to be British, European, Commonwealth. Yes. Yeah. When they're that one right. Is that something you're, you've gone past now and not going to move, is it? Well, everything's possible. You know, what do you, what do you say to that? The market has a speed and I suppose we have to keep up with it. So these opportunities, it may seem as though we have to buy bars. Uh, uh, those titles, I wish differently, but you never know. It could happen. It could. It, everything's possible. Boxing is, that's why it's such a sexy, beautiful game. <laughs> it's something you just, uh, you jump on, you ride, and you just gotta hold on. You take the opportunities as they come, as Frank said. Quick question, leading into the video stream this way, you made some reference to your son, the Chris Mayweather, that he beat the lofty. Is that not unnecessary pressure put on your boy looking back at it now? You see, Okay, first and foremost, one, this is my view, and I'm entitled to my view. Um, two, is the fact that pressure, this is what this game is about. It's all about pressure. Uh, now, if I'm going to do as I'm supposed to, which is to promote him, then yes, I'm to be saying that. And I'm trying to actually get him to know it and believe it and see where he can actually do it. So having a person like me in your stable is all about making you rise. Uh, I'm not doing this um, uh, gently, gently thing. You know, I'm, uh, I'm having him have the mind to go and get, grab, take. Why? Because you can. And that's my belief. I, you know, I, I don't believe in the piecemeal thing. Or well, we shouldn't say that. This is a game of pressure. Why do you think uh, I've become uh, notable? <laughs> it wasn't just because I had the ability to fight, I had the ability to actually uh, dare, 
there. So uh, this is all pressure and I want him to get used to that sooner rather than later. And that's why I think he's going to make a huge difference, especially with a man like me, promoting him and boxing as I do. You know, you may have noticed uh, tabloids don't pick me up too much, but broadsheets do. And from the broadsheets, it trickles down to the tabloid. So leave me to do what I do. And in actual fact, I wouldn't mind if he said, I'd understand, if he said, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Illuminate. Uh, beacon. Big. Boxing. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Embrace it. Not, this is not hide and seek. Speak uh, proudly for, we should speak proudly for what we do and for how we think and for how we see things. Do I think he can beat Golovkin? If he uses his jab, if he uses his radar, Absolutely. And I'm going to keep on pushing that. Absolutely. Miss Celia, short answer please. Are you going to America to train for this fight? Am I going to? Are you taking this beautiful to America to train for this fight? Everything's possible. It depends. It depends. I don't think that's going to be necessary, but you never know. We're going up to Manchester. We're going to do some training up there for a week. And there's more sparring there because in the south it seems we're finding it very difficult to find sparring partners. But everything's possible, we'll see. Um, Frank, if Chris wins this fight and you know, he, he might win this fight, do you already look at the winner of Regis on his Andy Lee? Is that realistic? Or? Well, it obviously makes a lot of sense. You know, the uh, division is really hot over there, isn't it? It's like going back. Chris's type. You now there's a few guys out there, or young Christopher, Billy Joe, Andy Lee. Uh, in that division, there are some great fights to be made. There's a natural rematch there between um, between the two of them. Andy Lee upset all the odds in, uh, in in the states and coming back with the title. Uh, looks like Bill's going to be fighting Andy Lee. We're just working on that at the moment and sort of trying to sort the, the date and the logistics of how that's going to work. And to me, if you know these two guys do meet again. If, you know, young Chris comes through for the uh, wins out of Billy Joe and Andy Lee, and I think that I think that would be Billy Joe. You've got a great fight with the uh, with the you know the interim title on the line and the WBO title on the line. It becomes a significant fight to make in the summer. So that's really how I would like like that to be you know, to move forward and like to see that that happen because it's great for the fighters and it's great for British boxing. So that, you know that's what we're working on. That's why when this opportunity came up and I was talking to um, uh, Vlad, who's the uh, uh, manager of shooting off and promoter of him, you know, um, we were talking about it for a while, and I just thought to myself, this is a great opportunity, you know, this is a great opportunity for young Christopher, and we moved heaven and earth to make it happen. So it's a, uh, you know, it's a great time for, for the, you know, for, for the, these fellas. I mean, it's uh, competitive. It's controversial, everybody's got an opinion about the last fight, they'll have an opinion about the next fight, you know, what the tactics will be. And as I say, if we, you know, the, the, the bit of a bonus could be if they both go into it with, uh, with belt strap, you know, with world title fights, uh, belt strap and away. It'll make it uh, a much bigger fight. You know, it's a great event on the, uh, on the 28th. We've got seven title fights on the game. Um, you look down there, we've got, you know, Liam Walsh should be in a title fight, Bradley Skeet, Bullioni, Frank Bullioni, Louis Petit. Cracking little fight between Ahmed Patterson and Glenn Foot, two undefeated fighters. Um, Eddie Chambers is going to be on the bill, so this, it is a fantastic card. The main event will be on latest, just after 11, and these guys will be on around 10 o'clock, just after 10 o'clock. So you haven't got to worry about getting home or anything. But you know, it's. it's this is what it's all about. This is what we all try to do, to put these shows together, great fights for the public, great opportunities for, for quality fighters. And, uh, you know, I liked, I liked what I see in Christopher in his last, last fight myself. I, I, I enjoyed the fight. It was a great fight. And I think, and I, and I think Billy Joe Saunders boxed extremely well and uh, showed what a good fighter he is. Yes, be a great rematch when it happens. Chris, Chris, 
Like I said before, um, I respect every fighter. Anyone who steps through the ring is, you know, deserves respect. As a fight, as a person, no, there's no respect there. He's not a respectable character. The things he says and does, um, you know, he hasn't apologized for. And um, you know, but I'd love the rematch. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing more um, I would love than to to avenge my defeat. Um, even though I don't see it as a defeat, I see it. You know, I, I feel like I outperformed him. You know, I've had people coming up to me saying, "Oh, I thought you won." I had, I had a gypsy guy come up to me um, a few weeks ago. He said, um, "Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Um, don't hit me. Just hear me out. Um, I'm Team Saunders. I'll always be Team Saunders. And you're a cocky bastard. But I thought you won the fight. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, the cold hard truth is I've got the loss on my record." And you know, I got a lot of pride, and I'd love to, uh, I'd love to put that straight. Will he take, will he take the rematch? I don't actually believe he will. Um, I believe he, that was the hardest fight of his career, and um, I believe he, he, he walked out of the ring that night with a lot of question marks. Um, you know, for me, I, I, I walked out of the ring thinking, I'm here. You know, I can do this. So um, I guess we'll see what happens, but a rematch is definitely something that I'm looking forward to. How long did it take you for that defeat to sink in, being your first professional defeat? Uh, I understood that I had the loss as soon as as soon as the referee, you know, raised the guy's hand. You know, it's just one of those things. But what what I do know is that um, there have been many many great fighters who've had. Um, you know, losses early in their career or at the stage I'm in right now in my career and those losses, some of those losses have been devastating losses. For me, you know, the, he, got, he, he got the fight by a few points. So, um, you know, it's a minor setback for a major comeback. And the comeback is on the, on the 28th of February. There was no more devastating loss than Amir Khan getting knocked out in one round by Brodus Prescott. Look where he is now. I mean, it's all about learning and learning from your mistakes. That's what it is, and uh, I'm sure you know, he's going to look look to look to the future. He's a young young guy. Actually, they're both the same age, aren't they, Bill, Bill and uh, Chris? So I mean, that's a it's a, it's a that's a fight that's, that, that will happen. I'm absolutely confident out down the road. It's, it's got to happen. Coach Junior, you say you've watched a bit of Junior in the past. Um, how do you rate him as an opponent? Um, you know, he's tough. He's, uh, he's, he's game. Obviously, he's, he's, got his, uh, he's still got his own. Well, you know, he's, he's had two draws, I think, but technically he's still undefeated. So um, he's going to want to do everything he can to, um, to keep that. But I think I'm just going to be too much for him. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a war path now. No messing about. Um, everything will be done perfectly, and um, I'm ready to. I'm ready to jump back in there. You know, straight back in there with a uh, you know top level fires and show what I can do. And for this fight, do you think you'll be more inclined to kind of uh, be top on gas a little bit earlier? You know, this guy is not Billy Joe Saunders. He's not a slick southpaw that you have to kind of figure out and and uh, you know. Um, he's. I know what he's gonna. I know what he's. I know what he brings to the table, and um, you know it's one of those things where you know if he does come to fight, which Saunders was not prepared to do. He wasn't prepared to stand toe to toe with me. He wanted to negotiate, you know, pick points and get away. I don't think this guy is gonna be like that. Um, and anyone who does try and stand toe to toe with me is not gonna last. So um, it's gonna be an exciting fight. Any more questions? Uh, the fight will be um, broadcast on Sky, well, obviously on Box Nation, on Sky 437 and HD 490. It'll be on Virgin 546 and Talk Talk 525. So um, tickets are available from events.